so welcome everybody to the um, April uh, Dash Evolution uh, first Dash Pay DAP uh, demo. Uh, we're reviewing today um, the second. This is demo number two. Um, I'm Chuck Williams, uh, UI UX tech lead for Dash. Um, Joshua Suba, you want to introduce yourselves? I'm Joshua. I'm a friend and developer on Evolution. I'm Suba, and I'm the UX designer on Evolution. So as I mentioned, this is uh, demo number two. Um, last time we demonstrated the first DAP full stack mock demo. It included a basic contact request response and denial flow built on top of a simulated locally managed mock blockchain on a virtual master node, or what we call a VMN, with a React front end interface. This time we're going to demonstrate a mock payments flow within the contacts context. Um, so when I speak of context, I'm talking about right now we're working in a proof of concept that we call the evolution context manager. And this is just a section of the functionality that we expect to deliver that's really focused around contact management. And in the context of contact management, Payments. Uh, and we had also intended to demonstrate the new Block Explorer today, um, but we've experienced a little bit of breakage in testing just a few minutes ago. So um, we'll make mention of it now and try and get it into the video later. Um, and then also, Suba is going to demonstrate a clickable prototype onboarding demo with the now voted outdated Ogilvy and Mather branding. Um, so, Joshua, I'll hand it over to you at this point. All right, I'm going to share my screen, and then we'll take a look at this new functionality. So I've got the prototype running right now, so I'll start us out fresh here. Uh, we're at the login screen, and we'll go in, reload it. One of the things that it's doing in the background is rebuilding all of the hashes and things that constitute the pre-populated data. Now we're going to log in as Alice and add Bob as a contact, just like we did last time. Bob is over here as a proposed contact. Now we have to log out of Alice and log in as Bob to go approve the contact. And now Bob can send Alice a payment or a payment request. So here's sending a payment of one. Uh, we're not tracking balances yet. That's on the immediate to-do list. And you can put in a memo and send payment. Now, when he does this, uh, we haven't got it hooked up to the VMN yet. So what happens with the request is we just get a little log that says, I got the message, I threw it away. But you can see that the request comes in with a two and the amount and a memo. And the same kind of thing for request payment. Put in the request, put in a memo. Request a payment. Here's the here's the payment message, the request with whatever memo you typed. Now, if we uh, if we had somebody who had just sent us a payment, uh, a contact request, we could send them a payment, but we couldn't ask them for money. And so it, this is all dependent on whether, you know, what the status of your, of your contact is. Are you a fully approved contact? Are you, you've just sent them information, but they haven't sent it back yet. Oh, and that's contextually sensitive there. And I, and I, I wanted to focus on that just for a second, that the um, users still can, can be paid without having to be a contact, just to be clear. So there was, there was some question about that from the last demo. Um, but yeah, you can certainly pay anybody by name. You don't have to be a contact first. All right, so that's that's a real quick, real quick demo of the new features there. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to squeeze in a, a later demo of the working block explorer. Cool, thanks Joshua. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're gonna bring it over to Suba and Suba's gonna walk us through the evolution onboarding flow that we've worked out from a graphic design perspective. This is a clickable prototype um, that has the Ogilvy and Mather branding that we will need to update um, with the new Tharp and Clark branding that has been voted in. 
So as Chuck mentioned, this is the water and outdated Ogilvy and Mantle branding. So the color theme might change based on the new um, logo which we get, but the user experience is going to remain solid. So again, this is the introduction screen. Unlike other worlds, we have like a sign in and sign in. This is what we try to achieve through this evolution product. Uh, just we can sign in like any other username and password, and we get all of our link rewards and everything into this one. So right now, we are going to focus only on the sign up flow. And when you click on sign up, uh, we just give an overall view of what's going to happen in the subsequent flows. The first thing is, which is the more the unique thing about evolution is this create account where you can able to create your own identity on the Dash blockchain network, where you can get a username and a password. Link as many as wallets under this account. And also step three is most important. We recommend to back up your wallet by making sure like the user takes note of the recording passphrase. So once we get started on this, um, so this is the sign up form where we create the account. So the user can able to enter his own desired username and then unique ID will get generated. The whatever the display name with the user enter here will be prefixed before this unique number so that the entire username becomes unique. He can choose a password of his choice. And once the account creation has been completed, then he can able to create a totally new wallet from scratch. Or if he already has an existing Dash wallet, he can able to add that into this account, creating a new wallet flow. Um, yeah. So now a new wallet has been created, and the user still has a choice to like skip this for now, like securing the wallet and directly go into the Dash Pay apps and start using it, or otherwise he can secure the wallet right away. So a general warning about like don't let anyone see this passphrase and also do not take screenshots because those are totally unsecured. And once the user acknowledges this message, and then we show the actual recovery passphrase. And once he makes a note of this, and then he clicks continue, then we ask the user to in by tapping them the correct order to make sure that it's been correctly noted down. Start tapping each of these buttons. This gets um, grayed out, and they appear here. He can also tap here to remove them out if necessary. But completely, the, it's verified, and then it says like your dashboard has been secured and your onboarding has been completed. And once he clicks it, he can go to the home page. And uh, the other flow, which is like Stream Wallet, we can go back to it here. So again, he can also choose to import on Wallet by clicking here, and then all we need is the recovery passphrase, which he has already saved somewhere here, and then import wallet. So his existing Dash wallet will be linked into his new Dash Pay account. So that's all we have right now here. Um, yeah, sure. Thanks, Suba. Um, a few notes on uh, what you've just seen. Um, those clickable prototypes have already received um, a number of updates and reviews uh, in terms of comments and changes that we'd like to make. Um, and some of those elements are not 100% locked in. Uh, we have to confirm um, the right flows and feasibility. There may be additional passphrases to back up. We may be consolidating certain interactions. Um, so that is um, something that we are using to um, kind of refine and simplify the flows. Um, so I think we're, we're getting there, but it's not quite 100% in terms of its um, ease of use and, and implementation. Um, and we hope to have that worked out prior to getting into code development for the onboard, onboarding flow. OK, um, so uh, what's next for us on the front end team? Um, first off, this past uh, in the past month, we've kind of uh, solidified our, our, um, our team as the UX and POC team. That's user experience and proof of concept team. Um, we will be focusing on um, building uh, prototypes and proving concepts that work from a user experience perspective and also solidifying a branding presentation in our components and interactions. Um, so in support of that, we will continue to develop over the next month our um, evolution DAP. Uh, 
nice interactions, uh, which is going to be a critical interaction for the evolution platform. Uh, meaning you will have signing devices, devices that, can, that hold your private keys, um, at, uh, upon which you will use to authorize, authenticate, or approve interactions that may have been invoked elsewhere on the Dash network. Um, for instance, on another computer or by a payment request from another user. Um, also, we'll be reviewing some of the dips that are being finalized. That's the Dash improvement proposals that affect uh, some of the flows that we're working through. And we'll be working on additional POC tests. I think the next major thing that we want to get in there is what we're calling signing device interactions. Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned um, I that. I got a question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Alex. What's our um, thoughts on the having them skip the secure the wallet? So um, in the copay, one of the imp things that we did to, to dissuade users from, from skipping that was we put a triple warning. Um, however, it's, I think it should be recognized that there may be reasons to skip through, um, and even if we don't want them to. But we've done the best we can, I think, at that point with a triple warning of, um, you know, are you sure you want to bypass this step? Um, the thoughts are at this point, I don't think we should prevent it. But we certainly want to be adamant about confirming a backup before one moves on to utilizing the wallet. And I'm using a little bit of lingo here. A triple warning in this case is, um, you know, you try to bypass it and it warns you once. You say skip again. It warns you a second time, which should get pe most people's attention. And then you skip again. And it warns you a third time with yet another different message. And that's rare enough, I think, to get most end users' attention uh, in saying, oh, this is this must be really serious, and and uh, hopefully they'll re read the warnings at that point. Next, I want to show you the Block Explorer. First, we're going to log in as Alice, and just like last demo, we'll add Bob. Bob is over here as a proposed contact, and here is the Block Explorer. <clears throat> This shows all of the blocks that have been mined on the VMN, a list of all the users, a list of the DAP contracts. We have one DAP, which is DashPay. And here's all the users' user spaces. Slot number zero here has two transitions in it for Alice. The first one is the same transition all these users have. That's the transition where they sign up to use the DashPay DAP. And Alice has a second transition here <clears throat> where she has added a contact. So the final state of her user space is she signed up for the DAP and she has a contact. If we were to add another user, now she's Propose two contacts she should have, a third transition, and now her DAP has three slots, one to sign up and one for each of the contacts. Transitions can be grouped together, but the demo right now is using one transition for every action. You notice that Bob over here does not have anything besides his sign up transition. These changes that we've made on Alice's side, adding Bob as a contact, and Charlie is a contact, don't do anything to their user space. They only change her user space. If we sign out and log in as Bob, <clears throat> here you can see the incoming contact request from Alice. This is because in Alice's user space, her transition where she makes contact with him is, uh, is visible to him. If he accepts it, he'll have a new transition in his user space to add her as a contact. OK, well, great. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, short and sweet demo today.